friends, it's Lisa, and welcome to a new week in the life reading vlog. I feel like I haven't just filmed a like week long reading vlog in a while. I think the only one I've done so far this year was like the first week of the year. So we're going to be doing one this week. Very excited. I mainly wanted to just do this vlog though, because the first few episodes of the Daisy Jones and the Six show are coming out this Friday. And we all know I need to have a place to yell about it. <laughs> but I am so excited for this adaptation. It looks like it's going to be so good. Like all of the trailers, everything, like all of the early reviews, like everything, it just looks like it's going to be really promising. And I'm just so excited. The couple of songs that we've gotten from the show as well, like are incredible. I think it's just so cool that like Daisy Jones and the Six is a real band. Like they have like actual music. It's just so weird to think about, but I'm loving it so much. I'm just so excited. And I recently did a reread of Daisy Jones. I listened to the audiobook, which is the first time I had ever listened to the Daisy Jones and the Six audiobook. And it was also incredible, but it just made me even more excited for the show and to see how they do certain things. Cause I know they're going to do like the interview view kind of thing with the characters, but then we're also going to see like the scenes actually happen. So I don't know. It's just going to be so good. I think it looks really promising and I'm so excited for the first few episodes to come out this Friday. And honestly, that's the main motivation for this vlog happening. I just wanted a place to yell about Daisy Jones. <laughs> but I am also hoping to get some reading done this week. I am in the middle of two things currently and I'm hoping that I can finish both of them by the end of February. Today is the second to last day of the month. Tomorrow's the last day of the month. Also Darian's birthday, so there's that. But I'm hoping that the things I'm currently reading I can finish by the end of February and I think I might be able to. We're also going to be doing sprints tonight on Darian's channel to celebrate her birthday. So with those sprints, I might be able to actually get these books done. We'll see. The two books that I'm currently in the middle of, very different vibes. One of them is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. I am 54% of the way through this book. It's not a very long book. I think it says on Goodreads that the hardcover is like 140 something pages. So it's not a very long book. So I'm hoping that I can start the sprints off reading that and finish that tonight. I also am enjoying it. I feel like it's a book that doesn't really have much of a plot. It's definitely more of a character driven novel. And I also feel like the description that you get for the book is just like the only way you can possibly describe it. It says, two young people meet at a pub in Southeast London. Both are black British, both won scholarships to private schools where they struggle to belong. Both are now artists, he a photographer, she a dancer, trying to make their mark in a city that by turns celebrates and rejects them. Tentatively, tenderly, they fall in love, but two people who seem destined to be together can still be torn apart by fear and violence. So I have a feeling this is gonna hurt me because right now, things seem okay. <laughs> so I'm just not ready for the emotional journey that this book is probably going to take me on. But so far I am enjoying it. Like I said, I'm like 54% of the way through. I'm a little over halfway. And this book is told in second person point of view. So that was a bit of an adjustment. It definitely was a bit weird getting into it. Cause I don't know if I've ever read a book that's in second person perspective. I feel like I haven't. So it was definitely like an adjustment the first couple of chapters, but I actually think that that perspective and it being written this way actually adds to like the impact of the story. So I don't mind that it's written in that way. And it's also just like really beautifully written. I feel like this is an author that I'm definitely going to want to check out. There are other books. I don't know. I think they have a book coming out later this year, but I don't know if they have anything else that they've written, but the writing itself is very beautiful. And yeah, I don't know. I'm liking it. Like I said, it's a very character driven novel. There's not a whole lot plot wise going on, but I just have a feeling it's going to be very emotional as I continue to read. So should be fun to read that on live sprints, I guess, later on tonight. It's fine. <laughs> I guess that's one thing that my current reads have in common. They're both going to cause me a lot of pain because the other book that I'm reading is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> I just feel like honestly this whole year I've been constantly reading Shadowhunter books, which is like not really the case, but also kind of. This is the fourth Shadowhunter book I've read in the first two months of the year. That's a lot. And they've been like four long Shadowhunter books, but it's fine. I'm having a great time. I love this world. I love these characters, so I don't mind it, but it just feels like I'm constantly reading something Shadowhunter related. <laughs> but yes, this is the second book in the Dark Artifices trilogy by Cassandra Clare, and this one is very painful not really prepared to continue on with this one, but it's fine. I'm also having a great time. This one, from what I remember, was my favorite from this trilogy. I do feel like this is one of her best books. And so far, like, I can read it and acknowledge that it's good. I think I'm just still in, like, Chain of Thorns, Last Hours lockdown. So I'm reading this book and I'm like, I'm reading about Shadowhunters, but it's not those characters from like Chain of Thorns, so what's the point? <laughs> but it is still good. I still really love this book and uh, there are characters in this particular series that I absolutely love. I love Kit, Ty, and Livy so much. They're like 
parts of this book are some of my favorite parts to read about. I feel like they're like my favorite perspectives to be in. I don't actually think, I don't think we get Ty and Livy's perspective. I think we just get Kit's, but following them is definitely like my favorite aspect of this book. But there's also just a lot going on. I do feel like this trilogy is one of the few series that Santa Claire has written where there's actually a plot. There's still a lot of character stuff going on. There's still a lot of angst and drama with the relationships, but there is actually a plot and like the political aspect of this series I think is really interesting. So yeah, there's just a lot happening with this book character-wise, plot-wise. There's so many characters, so many relationships, so many things going on there, but then the plot. There's a few different things going on, but then there's also things that like have carried on from the Mortal Instrument series and are still affecting the like Shadowhunter world and these characters now. And we're seeing how that's playing out. But then there's also things being set up for the Wicked Powers. So it's just like, it's just too much. And it's great, but also it stresses me out. And like, just knowing where this book ends, I'm like, what if I just never finish it? What if I just don't read the end of this book? Like, I know what happens. I don't need to read it again, you know? <laughs> but I mean, I am going to finish it. And hopefully I can finish it by the end of the month, which is tomorrow. And I think, did I say where I'm at in this book? I don't think I did. I'm on chapter 22, page 480. And there's, it's so annoying. There's 699 pages in this book. Cassandra Clare couldn't write one more page to get it to an even 700 it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I have like 200 pages, a little over 200 pages left of this book. So I do think I can finish it by tomorrow. I also have the audiobook for it. So I've been listening while reading along. So that's been helping me get through it a bit faster. Those are the reading plans. Other than that, don't know what I'm going to read after I finish these things. I feel like in the month of March, I do want to read more off of my physical TBR because I did not do any of that in the month of February. I, unless Chain of Thorns counts, because technically it arrived it was on my TBR for a brief second while it was in my house and I wasn't currently reading it and then I read it. But other than that, didn't read a single thing off of my TBR last month and I want to be prioritizing my physical TBR this year. So maybe in the month of March, I can actually do more of that. Maybe this week I can do more of that. But also I did um, cancel my current Kindle Unlimited subscription, but there's a few things on there that I downloaded onto my Kindle and my Kindle's on airplane mode. So they're still on there. I downloaded things like Sorcery of Thorns and An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Both of those are no longer on Kindle Unlimited. I downloaded them when they were. So they're still on my Kindle because I haven't taken it off of airplane mode yet. So it still thinks I have my Kindle Unlimited subscription. So I feel like maybe this week I might read Sorcery of Thorns because I really want to read that one. And Enchantment of Ravens, I do want to read it, but I feel like I'm more drawn towards Sorcery of Thorns. So I may read that this week so that I can take my Kindle off airplane mode. But while I still have it, I feel like I might try and read it. We'll see. But I don't know if I'm going to end up reading that this week. I honestly don't know. We're just going to see where the week takes us. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Eve. phone because it's just a bit easier than filming on my camera plus my camera battery is charging because I just got done filming my February wrap up. I did manage to finish both Open Water and Lord of Shadows before the end of February so very happy about that. Thought we could quickly chat about them because I did just film my wrap up so I just talked about these books and I've I've had enough about talking about books for a minute. <laughs> 
I just feel like my brain becomes mush after I film a video and like wrap ups like filming that wrap up and how much I struggled to speak and get my thoughts out it's reminding me of why I stopped filming wrap ups in the first place so we'll see if the wrap ups this year continue we'll see how long it goes if anyone has any suggestions of how I could make my wrap ups like more interesting than me just sitting there talking about the books and holding them up or whatever like let me know you have any fun ideas but like i said i did finish reading open water and lord of shadows and open water i ended up giving four stars i really did enjoy this i thought the writing was really beautiful i think the way that it was written really added to the impact of the story not only the more emotional and like harsh realities of these characters especially when it has to come with them being black and the things that they have to just like accept and the kind of exhaustion and trauma that comes with that and just like the difficulties with that but also the like beautiful things and the discussion of like love and art and relationships just the writing itself very beautiful really added to the impact of the story i do feel like there were moments where the writing was almost so like descriptive and flowery and lyrical that i like wasn't fully comprehending the meaning sometimes like i feel like i would miss what the author was trying to say not a lot just like a couple of times where i was like i feel like i don't fully understand what is being said I gave it four stars I think it's really beautiful I understand why people really love this book I think it's a very emotional read and I would like to revisit it in the future I definitely think if I revisit it in the future I want to spend more time just like with the actual text and like analyze not so much analyzing it but just like spend more time absorbing it I mean I did take like a few days to read this book even though it is pretty short because I just wanted to fully like get the impact of the story but I feel like I could have taken even longer with it and spent more time really focusing on the writing and really understanding it so I don't know gave it four stars do think it's really great though really beautiful very emotional and I also did finish Lord of Shadows I had to grab it from my uh, pile of things from my wrap-up but um yeah this was five stars <laughs> I really love this book. I think this series, I was just saying in my wrap up that Cassandra Clare does a really good job of balancing like the normal character drama and angst that she always has in her series with a very like intriguing plot and like the politics and where that goes in this series is very interesting. And I feel like a lot of that really picks up in the second book, which is this one. Uh, Lady Midnight is kind of introducing some of those things, but this I feel like introduces so many other things going on and really forwards a lot of the politics and the plot the plots there's many plots there's many things going on but also all of the character relationships plus this book does have more kit ty and livy content which i'm all about like their parts in this book like when we were in kit's perspective were some of my favorite parts of this entire book i just love them <laughs> But yeah, finished this. Gave it five stars. Finished Open Water. Gave it four stars. And I haven't started reading anything else yet. I am thinking that the next thing I pick up is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, just because I know I have that on my Kindle and I can't take my Kindle off of airplane mode until I read it. I think I think I checked and I could still open it and read it. I probably should double check that before I commit to reading that next. Might be a good idea, <laughs> but I think I could. I think it was working before. So I think I might read that next we'll see but yeah i mean i think that's it i don't really have much else to say we are doing the lady midnight live show tonight for the shadow hunters read along so i'll have that linked below because we kind of pushed everything off a month we kind of used january as like a catch-up month so we're now doing the lady midnight live show and hopefully we can do the lord of shadows one soon i think both casey and darian are currently reading lord of shadows so we should be able to do that live show soon and i just need to start mentally preparing that i need to read queen of air and darkness this month I need to read that like almost thousand page book in a month okay yeah that i need to start mentally preparing for that <laughs> to give a little update i honestly i don't have too much to update on i only just started sorcery of thorns because my kindle it's letting me read it it's happening um even though i don't have kindle unlimited anymore i haven't taken it off of airplane mode i just need to remember to not take it off airplane mode while i'm reading this or else it will disappear but it's letting me read sorcery of thorns so very happy about that and i only read the first chapter last night so i'm literally on page 12. <laughs> But I mean, so far, it's I'm liking the writing. I think it's an intriguing premise. I don't really have many thoughts. When I went on to Goodreads to mark this as currently reading, it has a variety of ratings from a lot of people. Like I was going through the people who I'm friends with or follow on Goodreads, and there's literally one through five star ratings for this book. So I honestly have no idea how I'm going to feel about it because there's people who I feel like I have similar tastes to that have loved this book. And then there's people who I think I have similar taste to who have not liked this book. So honestly, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. But so far, 
it's fine. I literally have only read a chapter, so I really don't have many thoughts, but like I said, the writing is fine so far. Yeah, I don't know. I hope I like it. It seems like something that I'm going to enjoy, but we'll see. I also wanted to talk about um, Aurora. That's a thing that exists. The Daisy Jones and the Six album released today. Wild. Wild that Daisy Jones and the Six is a real band. They have a real album. It's not computing in my brain. <laughs> and of course, I listened to it. I like thought for like 0.2 seconds about waiting until like after the show came out or like hearing the songs in the show to listen. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not waiting for the show. I have to listen to it. So I listened and I like it. I do feel like it's kind of disappointing that a lot of the lyrics that we see in the book and like the significance of certain songs in the book don't match up with the actual songs from the show and like a lot of the lyrics and stuff aren't in the actual songs. Like I was really hoping we would get the and when you think of me I hope it ruins rock and roll line because I think that's so iconic and it's not it's nowhere. Maybe they say it. Maybe it's like a moment of dialogue instead of putting it in the songs. I don't know. So that's like my one thing. It's just like kind of sad that that's it didn't line up with what happens in the books and like the lyrics don't really occur in the actual songs but the actual songs themselves I do enjoy and I think like once I see the show and once I see the episodes and see the songs like in the actual show I'm gonna like it a lot more yeah I don't know it's just wild to me that Daisy Jones and the Six is a real band they have a real album you can buy a vinyl of their album I need it so bad <laughs> but yeah I'm just really excited about it and I think the show I keep seeing that the show the first few episodes or something are premiering tonight. Today's Thursday. It says it's coming out Friday, but I'm seeing somewhere that it's gonna come out tonight at 7 p.m. So I'm just gonna be prepared no matter what. <laughs> but I think we're getting like the first three episodes tonight, question mark, unsure. But each Friday there's gonna be a few episodes at a time. So I think it's gonna be three episodes tomorrow, three episodes next week, and then two episodes the following two weeks after that. So it's nice that it's like we don't have to wait week to week for one episode and it's like it's gonna be a little bit more at once. But I also like that it's not all at once because then it's going to make the experience last longer. So yeah, I think it's going to be fun to have to like wait week to week for it, but also not have to wait week to week for one episode. We'll have like three or two episodes that we can watch at once. I don't know. I'm really excited. It looks really good. All the little trailers and previews we've seen. I just, I'm very excited about it. So yeah, if it comes out tonight, we'll be back here chatting about at least the first episode because I'm going to have to watch at least the first episode tonight. <laughs> so true queen ignore how red my face is she's having wine to celebrate daisy jones <laughs> but i watched the first episode i'm emo already there definitely have already been some like changes to the book which i expected and knew going into it but so far i mean it's good the first episode was really good there's already things where i'm like oh they're already hinting to things that are gonna start happening like at the end and I kind of hate it here. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get into episode two now because I, I have a feeling I'm gonna watch all three tonight. There's no way knowing that they exist and that I can watch them that I'm not gonna watch all three right now. <laughs> Hello friends, happy Friday. So last night was correct. The seven o'clock release for Daisy Jones and the Six was real, it happened. So I did watch all three episodes that have come out so far last night. <laughs> there was a brief moment where I was like, what if I make it last and watch it throughout the whole weekend? I always think that and I never do it. I always, I just can't not marathon shows when they come out, especially ones I'm very excited about. So I've watched all three episodes and so far, I'm really enjoying it. Like, I feel like they've done a really good job. I do feel like the first three episodes are kind of a lot of setup and just like establishing the characters and their personalities and things that they've gone through that make them the characters that we know later on. And it's like all important stuff. And it's like all like the relationships and dynamics between the band members and things like that. So it's all important information, but it is a lot of like kind of setup, but I still enjoyed it. Like I still think the first three episodes were really good. I just feel like it's going to get so much better as we get into like the actual story and things really start to pick up a lot more. So, so far though, like the first three episodes I thought were really, really good. And I'm so excited because the music from like the Dunn Brothers slash The Six and also like Daisy Jones, like their music before they 
came together as one band is on Spotify, so you can listen to their own songs, which is just so cool. I feel like the Dunn Brothers, Daisy Jones, and Daisy Jones at the Six, they're gonna be in my Spotify wrapped, I feel like, this year. They're gonna show up, I bet. <laughs> There's especially, like, a song that Daisy sang on the piano in one episode, and it's so good, and I feel like I need to find it on Spotify and just listen to it on repeat because I really liked it in the episode. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. There definitely have been some changes and I feel like we kind of knew about some of the changes going into the show. Like we knew that Pete wasn't going to be there. We knew like the reason they called themselves The Six was going to be different. And I feel like that clip of them like making up their new band name, that was like a teaser before the show came out. So I think we kind of all knew why they were going to be called The Six before going into it. If you saw the teaser, we were kind of already knowing and anticipating some of the changes that they were going to make, but I still think the story itself and the show itself is still really good. I'm not someone that like, if we get an adaptation of a book to a show or a movie or whatever it is, like if they have to change things, I don't get that mad about it. It's just when they start changing things that like don't make sense and influence the overall story and it just starts to go in weird directions. And I just, it's not like, it just feels very different from the actual source material, but I feel like they've made some changes but they're all good ones like I don't know like the show itself I still feel like is very strong and like the heart of the story is still there so I'm really excited to see where it goes and continue on. I feel like they're already starting to like hint at things. There's already like, I don't know, there's just like subtle things that are hinting at what's to come so I'm very excited but also like not really prepared to probably sob like I do with the book. <laughs> I'm also excited we got the I'm not the muse, I'm the somebody line because that is simply everything. <laughs> so yeah, Daisy Jones and the Six, first three episodes, iconic, obsessed, love them. But I also wanted to update on Sorcerer of Thorns because I did read a little bit of it yesterday when I was watching some of Steph's sprints. I also read a little bit last night and this morning. I'm now on chapter nine, which is 18% of the way through the book. So I also realized I never really talked about what this book is about. I was kind of waiting to be far enough in to actually know. I kind of went into this book not really knowing too much about the plot. I knew there was like magical books. And that's really it. So I didn't really know much about it, but we're following Elizabeth, who is an apprentice at like one of the great libraries. And she has been told that all like sorcery and all sorcerers are evil. But in the library, they have these like magical grimoires, these books that have all of the like information on sorcery and magic and all the different spells. And the magical grimoires themselves, these magical books can actually turn into monsters. So Elizabeth wants to become a warden to protect everyone from these things and like understand their powers and the magic and everything. One night there ends up being this attack on the library and Elizabeth ends up being the one that's like accused of being the one that was responsible. So she has to go to the Capitol to like face the charges for her crime basically. And she ends up being taken there by Nathaniel Thorne, who is a sorcerer. Honestly, like where I'm at in the book, that's kind of what I'm up to. Like they're kind of traveling to the Capitol right now, but it does say in the description that the two of them find themselves entangled in a centuries old conspiracy. And I'm not going to read beyond that in the description because I kind of just want to keep reading the book and see what happens for myself but I'm really interested in this book so far. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know why. I just feel like something has like clicked with me with this book. I do really enjoy books about books. So these ones are also magical, which is just very fun and very interesting to read. And I also really like characters. I really like Elizabeth. I also really like Nathaniel Thorne. Literally the first scene we see of Nathaniel, I'm like already obsessed with him. <laughs> I'm so excited to see where it goes. I don't know, just something about it is just really clicking with me and I'm really enjoying it. I have seen some reviews where people say like they were really enjoying it in the first half and then they kind of lost interest and didn't enjoy the second half as much so fingers crossed that doesn't happen to me and I really enjoy it like enjoy it the whole way through at least I don't know right now I'm just I'm really enjoying it so I'm excited to keep going with that I'm hoping that this weekend I can read a lot of it maybe even finish it I also do have an enchantment of ravens by the same author on my kindle they were both on kindle unlimited at the same time so if I just keep my kindle on airplane mode I may read an enchantment of ravens as well I'm just really liking the writing style the character the magic. I'm just really excited to keep going. So we may end up reading Enchantment of Ravens as well in this vlog or starting it. Who knows? But yeah, I think that that's it for now. Both Sorcery of Thorns and Daisy Jones and the Six, the show enjoying both of them so much already. And if you've seen any of the episodes of Daisy Jones yet, I would love to hear your thoughts and what you're thinking of the show so far.
All right, friends, I wanted to update one last time before closing out this vlog because this weekend I did do a decent amount of reading. I was in a very big reading mood, I feel like, this weekend. On Saturday, I did end up finishing Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I ended up giving this four stars. I did, in the end, really enjoy it. I agree with a lot of the, like, other reviews I'd seen of this book where the first half is a lot stronger than the second half, but for me, I still enjoyed the second half enough where it didn't influence my overall enjoyment of the book. I just definitely was a little disappointed pointed because the first like third of the book I feel like where I was at when I updated the last time on Sorcery of Thorns I was really loving it I was like this is giving me five star feelings and obviously that didn't end up happening because I gave it four stars so those feelings didn't really stay with me and I was sad that that didn't happen but I still enjoyed the book overall I still liked where everything went I think something that I did enjoy about this book was how there were so many things that happened that I didn't anticipate happening there would be like reveals or certain things within the plot that would come up and happen that I didn't expect to happen when they did. I feel like there were certain things I just expected to last a lot longer or that was going to be like the main plot but then we'd find something out like halfway through the book and I'm like oh so now where is it going to go? I think it just kept me really intrigued because I never really knew exactly where it was going to go. I also really loved the characters. I feel like that was like the strongest thing for me within this book and why I think even though I wasn't as into the plot and what was going on perhaps in the second half I still enjoyed what was going on because I liked the characters. I loved Elizabeth. I loved Nathaniel. Nathaniel is simply everything and the only man ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I also really loved Silas and I loved like them as a group and their friendship but also like individually the different dynamics that they had with each other, the romantic relationships, the just like platonic friendships. I just loved them so much. I even feel like there were a lot of side characters that really didn't get as much page time as the main characters but I still enjoyed them and I just I don't know I really really liked the characters in this book which I think is why I liked it so much and I know that like a novella set in this world and following these characters was just released I think recently like within the last month or so and I definitely want to read that because I think I'll really enjoy it I think because it's mainly just following these characters it, I don't think it has like the biggest plot but I don't really care because I just want to see more of these characters and get more from them so I definitely want to read that at some point so yeah overall I did enjoy Sorcery of Thorns I gave it four stars it's probably like if we wanted to get really specific probably like a 4.25. It's not quite a four and a half, but I feel like four is almost too low. So like if we want to be really annoying and really specific, a 4.25. But overall, I did enjoy it. And because I liked Sorcery of Thorns, I knew I had an Enchantment of Ravens on my Kindle as well. So I decided Sunday morning to start that. I think I only read like a chapter or so. And then later on in the afternoon, I ended up not really feeling well. My stomach was kind of bothering me. So I just like got into bed and read like almost all of An Enchantment of Ravens in one sitting. I did take a little nap, but I read most of it and then had dinner, went back to reading, watched the episode of The Last of Us that was on last night, which by the way, not a great episode to watch when you're already feeling a little nauseous. <laughs> but I watched that and then went back to reading and finished it before I fell asleep. So I read the entirety of An Enchantment of Ravens yesterday. I don't know why that happened, but I'm not mad about it. It's only like 300 pages, so it wasn't like a huge fantasy book by any means. But yeah, I don't know. I just decided to read it and then I ended up being determined to finish it by the end of the day. So that's what happened. <laughs> so yeah, I read An Enchantment of Ravens. Unfortunately, didn't love it as much as I loved Sorcerer of Thorns. I ended up giving it three stars. This book, you're following a character named Isabel who does portraits. She paints portraits and she does these portraits of the Fae because they are kind of obsessed with humans and their craft. Fairies in this world don't really have like human emotions. They're not able to create in that way. So they're kind of obsessed with the way humans are able to do that. So one day she ends up getting a client who is the Autumn Prince who wants a portrait and she realizes that in his eyes is a very human emotion of sorrow so to get the most accurate portrait she draws that in his eyes but when that portrait ends up getting revealed in the fake courts he gets very upset about it because having those human emotions in his eyes could be seen as a weakness it could cause his enemies to kind of go after him so he goes back to Isabel and he's like hey, you gotta come with me because you gotta face trial for this crime that you committed. Like, why did you paint, you know, human emotions in my eyes? That's not okay. So you gotta come with me. So this whole book is them basically just traveling through the fairy lands. Also, the fact that in this world, a fairy and a mortal cannot fall in love. It's against the law. So that's a big part of the whole book. So this definitely is a book that doesn't have very much of a plot. It's very much focusing on the characters and their relationship and the angst that kind of comes with that. But I don't really mind if there's no plot to a book. I feel like if the vibes are there, if the characters and the tension and the romance is there, I don't mind it. 
However, <laughs> I feel like this book, the characters, I liked them, but I didn't really love them either. They didn't really, I feel like nothing in this book was as fully fleshed out as I wanted it to be. I feel like this book had a lot of potential, but a lot of things just kind of fell flat. I liked Isabel, the main character, but she didn't like, I don't know, like she was just fine. I liked her. And Rook, who is the autumn prince, he's kind of the love interest. He like had moments where you could see a bit of personality and when we saw those moments I liked his character but I feel like those were few and far between and for the most of the book he just didn't really have much of a personality. I didn't dislike him, I just didn't really love him either. <laughs> and I feel like if you're gonna have a book that really centers the relationship and the characters, the characters in the relationship need to be fully developed and I need to feel fully connected and I didn't really feel that way. I liked it, like the thing with this book, I gave it three stars because to me it didn't do anything that I really disliked, but it didn't do anything that I really loved either. So I think just overall I wanted more from this book. I wanted more from the characters, more from the relationship. I think if I was more invested in the characters and their like romantic relationship, then I would have enjoyed this book a lot more because that is so much of the focus. So yeah, I mean, I it was fine. It was a fine book to read in one day while I was not feeling well, but it wasn't anything that I loved either. Very middle of the road, just like an average read, which is why I gave it three stars. I will say it might have been not a smart choice to go from Margaret Rogerson's like sophomore novel back to her debut because I think I was expecting the same level of like love for the characters and everything that I had with Sorcery of Thorns with this first book and I definitely think that there is an improvement from her first book to her second book so that could be my fault <laughs> for reading one of her more recent books and then going back to her debut. I don't know but it does make me excited to pick up more of her books in the future. I know she came out with a book a couple years ago called Vespertine? Is that what it's called? Which I don't even know what that one's about at all. I feel like I knew what it was about when it came out because I heard people talking about it, but now I don't remember. But I do want to check that out and potentially read it because I did enjoy Sorcery of Thorns and I still like Enchantment of Ravens was just fine. Like I said, didn't do anything that I disliked. I just didn't love it either. So I definitely think I'll check that out at some point as well as the little novella from the Sorcery of Thorns world and characters. But I'm happy that I read them because I wanted to read these books for a really long time. I remember when they came out and people were talking about them, I really wanted to read them. So I'm happy that I I finally read both of them. I definitely think Margaret Rogerson is now an author that I'm definitely going to keep my eye on and want to read more from in the future. But yeah, that's I think everything for this vlog. I'm really happy with what I managed to read this week. I finished Lord of Shadows earlier on by Cassandra Clare and gave that five stars. I read Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson and gave that four stars. I read Sorcery of Thorns and gave that four stars. And Enchantment of Ravens, both of those by Margaret Rogerson, and I gave that one three stars. So I'm happy with that. I feel like I may or may not be entering a fantasy era. I wanted to read more fantasy this year because I feel like I have not been reading a ton of fantasy, which is like, it makes me sad because I do love that genre, but I just was really into the romance vibes. But I feel like perhaps we may be entering a fantasy era yet again. It was a goal of mine this year to read more fantasy, but I wanted it to happen naturally. I wanted to be in the mood for it. I didn't want to just like force myself to read more fantasy. So I feel like that might be happening, which I'm very happy about that because I definitely want to read more and more fantasy. Uh, I have a lot on my TBR because it is a genre that I tend to buy a lot of and then just not read. <laughs> so yeah, I did a decent amount of reading and I actually just went on to Storygraph and figured out how many pages I read just this week and I read a thousand and ninety three pages. So I feel like that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, overall, a pretty good reading week and also Daisy Jones and the Six, first three episodes. I thought they were great. I'm having a great time and I think it's only going to get better as the show continues. But yeah, if you're watching the show, I would love to know your thoughts, what you're thinking of it so far. And also if you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts down below. We can chat about them, but I think that, that is going to be it for this vlog. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.